Invincible is finally back. And like most other people, I am so happy. It's been so long. Or at least it's felt that way. Season 2 definitely has some big shoes to fill. That's for sure. But I have to say, we've gotten off to a good start. We kick off about a month later after the events of Mark and Omni-Man's fight. We get not only to see the fallout of that event, but we also get to see how this impacts not only Mark, but his friends, family, and the regular civilians living in the Invincible universe. It's a complete return to form, with Mark trying to find out who he is as a person, as well as a hero, without his father there to guide him. We get to see how Mark's friends and family in the world are all dealing with the news of Omni-Man's betrayal as well, alongside Mark, and how not only this impacts Mark, but also how the world views Mark now. It's definitely a different world now without Omni-Man, and we get to see how each character navigates that in their own unique way. There's some very solid improvements all throughout the season, from not only the art style changing very slightly, as well as the animation also improving. I will say, in terms of the animation, it's not that big of a noticeable change, but if you're observant, you'll notice that the animation's a lot more consistent, unlike in season one, where there'll be times where the animation dipped a bit in quality. It was still good, don't get me wrong, but now it's in a consistently good level. And hey, that's what we want, baby. Now, I will say, the pacing in this episode is phenomenal. It's very well done, very well paced. I didn't feel like anything was rushed or anything was too dragged out. It felt like everything fit perfectly into the narrative that they were trying to say. Now, I, for one, am a bit shocked, especially with how the season opens. Now, again, I won't be spoiling anything, so don't worry. I was shocked how quickly we jumped into one of the story points that we hinted at in the trailer. I didn't read the comic, so obviously I'm a series only Andy. So I don't really know what to expect. I know some slight spoilers here and there, but I'm still, for the most part, fairly fresh. So I thought this plot point that they brought up would be a bit more later on down the line, but it's interesting to see how this is going to play out and it's interesting to see how these events that are taking place now will affect the story on later down the line now there's quite a bit to chew on with this episode again it's definitely a time to form invincible is truly back this episode is good now sure nothing out of this world or mind-boggling but a solid episode a good start and not only builds on the previous season but it's also building towards a future that is looking very interesting. If you're on the fence, which I don't know why you are, it's a good episode. It is completely solid. You definitely want to get on this. I'm going to give this episode a mark, getting his ass beat out of 10. Also, side note, Amber did appear a few times in this episode. And I have to say, as an avid Amber hater, she wasn't that bad this episode. There's plenty more within the next upcoming episodes for them to completely destroy her character further. But I have to say, this time around, she's not really annoying at all, even. She's decent. It feels like this time they took away a little bit of focus on her and instead are just making her play the role of the girlfriend, which I think is for the best, especially how fans feel towards Amber. Like, they're not fans of her, and the less you show off her, the better. I'm going to be honest with you. But, yeah. She played a decent role this time. She didn't come off as annoying. She didn't come off as preachy. She came off as just the concerned girlfriend for Mark. And you know what? I think that's just for the best. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Now, from this point on, we are talking spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, and more spoilers. If you're adverse or you don't want to be spoiled, this is your time to jet. I appreciate you listening to the video. Please give me a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. However, if you've already watched the episode or you don't really care and you just want to know anyways, this is for you, baby. Now, the season opens up with an alternate universe, Mark and Omni-Man, basically just taking over the world. Now, we kind of got that from the trailers, so that wasn't too surprising. But I was surprised with how, literally, we got into that plot point immediately. I, for one, thought this plot point will be something we see a little bit later down the line. And with this alternate universe, we were introduced to a new character who has the ability to open portals to multiple universes. And there's some interesting things happening with him that I'll get into a bit later. But we also got a big revelation, which is kind of interesting and adds a bit more complexity to Mark's character. We find out that in most universes, Mark actually teams up with Omni-Man and takes over the planet. Now, this is interesting because now that we have this information, we have to think to ourselves, what makes our Mark different and what makes the alternative universe's Mark different? This is a pretty interesting question in my opinion and something that I am looking for them to explore more as the episodes go on. But it's a pretty big revelation and I'm intrigued. My interest is there. Invincible, you got me, baby. You got me in. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. One interesting plot that's brought up is that we get to see the Guardians of the Globe and how they're dealing with the aftermath of Omni-Man. 
Now, the Guardians of the Globe are still trying to find their footing. You can definitely tell that they're still inexperienced, they're rough around the edges, and it shows. So much so that the character Cecil is now introducing not only a new member to bring in more muscle, and they also brought back the Immortal, which I'm pretty excited about. We didn't get to see much of him in the previous season. We got to see a bit of his past. We got to see a bit of him in the beginning of the season. Now, I am curious to see how the dynamics are going to change with them bringing him on as a character, and with them bringing him on as a regular member of the team. I'm curious to see how the dynamics are going to work between them, and I'm curious to see where this story is going to go. This season is definitely a lot of setup. Still enjoyable, but a lot of setup, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. Now, there is one part within this episode that kind of confuses me a little bit, is this character. I'm pretty sure he was dead in the previous season, because I just watched it before watching this episode. So, what's happening here? Now, this could be a thing of maybe they cloned him or maybe he has a superpower of coming back from the dead. I'm not sure, but we'll hopefully get this explained a bit later. It was a bit weird just seeing him, especially after seeing him die in the previous season. I wasn't expecting that. It was like, oh, that, okay, I guess. That was a bit surprising. Now, one big theme that was introduced within this season, and I feel this is going to be a very important theme going all throughout the season, is... Mark is living in fear of becoming his father. Omni-Man was Mark's hero. He was always someone that Mark aspired to be and wanted to be like. So much so that it bothered him all throughout the first season that he wasn't as strong or wasn't as good as his father. It was one of his main motivations to become a hero. He wanted to be like his dad. And now, now he's dealing with the fallout of finding out that his father is not only a mass murderer, but is also someone who didn't even care about him or his family as much as he thought he did. And this weighs on him heavily. All throughout the episode, Mark is just contemplating his place in the universe and contemplating his life now. He doesn't really know where to go from here. And he's kind of just bumbling his way through the episode to try and find purpose again. And I'm so interested to see how this theme gets carried on throughout the season. I genuinely think this is such a good angle. I'm hoping they can work with this a bit more. And I don't just drop this plot point within the next few episodes. But I'm going to give the writers the benefit of the doubt. They have not disappointed me so far. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. Another element that they introduced, and this one's going to also be something that will be important as the season goes on, is the relationship between the Immortal and Invincible. Now, the Immortal still holds a massive grudge against Omni-Man for obvious reasons and a lot of that anger that he had towards Omni-Man is now being directed towards Mark and we find this out later on within the episode he doesn't trust him and these are understandable motivations and if I was in his shoes I wouldn't trust Mark either because as the audience we get to see everything through Mark's eyes we get to see who he truly is as a person his values his motivations Omni-Man doesn't know that and Omni-Man can't trust him and I think this is going to be an interesting element all throughout the season Boys, a lot of setup is happening here, and I am so excited to see all of this play out. It is, ooh, it is going to be so good. It's been a while, like seriously, it's been a while since we've had a show like this that we can actually look forward to week to week. Like, uh, it's been a bit dry, in my opinion. Like, there's been some interesting shows here and there, but nothing that is on this level. I'm so excited to get back into this universe, and I'm so excited to see where this all goes. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I really am that excited. Now, this was something that just kind of made me laugh and something that I did enjoy them doing. And I'm so happy they kind of put this back. I know it might have annoyed some people, but I'm so happy they put it in the episode. So there were several times within the episode where they'd mention the name Invincible, but they'd say it in such a way that you're kind of getting ready for the title card to pop up. They'd say a sentence that's leading into the name Invincible, and then they'd have a massive pause and then say his name. And they did this so many times. <laughs> and look, I know there's some people that really hated this, but I'm not one of them. I love the whole title card thing. It was so funny to me. And I hope it continues. Or at least maybe, you know, introduce it in the first episode and then maybe the final episode. That would be cool. Now, for my final thoughts, the episode was good. It was invincible at its best. So obviously there was a lot of setup within this episode. There might not be as much action as some people might have liked, or maybe some people wanted a bit more. I can understand that, but it's still a solid episode. It is enjoyable. It is just invincible at its best. It's invincible being invincible, and that's all I want. It is so good to have it back. Now, I did do a bit of research, and there is something that I found interesting, and I don't know how I feel about this. Apparently, we're only going to be having the first four episodes, or 
only half of a season. I'm not sure if it's eight episodes or 10 episodes this time around, but I believe it's four. They're only going to have the first four episodes and then they're going to go on a little bit of a break and then come back later on within the year of 2024. And I don't know how I feel about that personally. Like, I get what they're doing. They're trying to hold the viewers' attention. They're trying to garner more people to go watch it so that people can catch up. It's basically just a marketing tactic. I just don't know how smart of an idea this is. Now, there are other shows that have done this. Stranger Things being the prime example I'm thinking of right now. And anime, specifically modern anime, seems to be doing this a lot. And it seems to be working. So, okay. I'm just not a big fan of this. I would have preferred to have the whole season come out every week. Now, I didn't need it all to come out in one go. Like some people will. Some people would have wanted to be binged all at once. That's not really me. But I would have preferred it to be a weekly thing instead of it going to be only the four episodes break then the next four. (sighs) Not really a big fan of it, but hey, it's happening. So it is what it is. Thank you guys for listening. Let me know what you guys think. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Also, like, why? I think this was a good episode, especially for us starting the season. This was a good starting point. I really did enjoy this episode. So if you didn't or you did, please send me down below. I am curious to see what you guys have to say about it. But other than that, I'm super happy that Invisible is back. I'm so excited. And it has been so long. But please, guys, if you like this kind of content, if you like what I'm doing, Please leave a like. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'd appreciate all the support. I just want to thank you guys. I hope you guys not only have a great day, but a great week ahead. Bye-bye now.